Counting double digit thousand. <laughs>Hello YouTube, we are back again with another video in the Passive Crossover Design Series by Jeff Bagby. This is a program that allows you to design your own crossovers for speakers. Um, now we went ahead and implemented a couple, a woofer and a tweeter already, and we've shown you how we've created the crossover. Now what we have to do is implement the values that we have into the actual crossover. So where do the values go and where do we get the components? So Right now, we have a 2500 uh, hertz crossover on both the tweeter and the woofer. We have a second order going on, and if you take a look, we also have a Zobel on the woofer. Now, let's take a look at the woofer first. Now, it's going to actually tell you the different components you're going to need. An L is an inductor, a C is a capacitor, and an R is a resistor. Uh, the great thing about this program is it actually has some charts built into it. So if you take a look at it, it says view PCD circuit layouts. There's a button here that says that. If you click on it, you're going to start to see these diagrams. Now this is the woofer selection diagram and if you scroll down there's a tweeter selection diagram. Now uh, this will actually have a corresponding number and letter that correspond with the values that we had earlier. Let me show you what I mean by that. When I go back to the main, we take a look at L2, the inductor, um, it actually says that's L2. If we hover over our mouse over this, it's going to say C2. If we hover our mouse over this one, it's going to say C5. And this one, R7. So what we need to do is actually just transfer these to that chart and it's going to show us how to build that. Now I'm going to show you actually by using um, Photoshop uh, on how to do that. But before I show you how, how that's all going to work out and how we're going to actually create the crossover, let me show you where to buy the parts from. So if you want to buy a .53 inductor for example, what you're going to do is you're going to go on the internet and you're going to go to uh, Parts Express or some other website where you can buy inductors, resistors, and crossovers. I'm sorry, and capacitors for your crossover. Now when you're going to buy an inductor, if you want a really good sound, you're going to buy an air core inductor. Don't mess with these. The only reason why you would get um, the solid core inductor is if you're trying to pinch pennies, but the air core inductor is definitely going to give you a better sound. Uh, and the resistors, uh, you're going to want to get the audio grade resistors, non-inductive resistors, okay? They're very cheap too. Um, so don't skip out on those. Now on the capacitors, most of us will be sticking right here with the non-polarized electrolytic capacitors. Uh, so when you go to the website, you can get very confused by getting all of these. Just just do the ones, these ones, and you'll be set. Now, first one was 0.53. So we're gonna scroll down up. We don't have a 0.53. Take a look, we have a 0 0.51, 0 0.55, and a 0 0.50. So now what do we do? It's pretty simple. We substitute one. You could make a 0.53 if you really wanted to by buying a bunch of different inductors, but it's really not worth it. If you take a look at your chart, what you're going to want to do is put in the value that you can get. So we could either get a 0.51 or a 0.55, I believe. So 0.51. Now when you do that, you see this raises this middle part a little. Did you see that? Let's go back. So it was a 0.53. See how it goes down. It's going to change the chart ever so lightly. So take a look at the chart after you put in the numbers and see what you want it to do. So if you want it to go up a little, which I think might actually be nicer, um, you could put it at 0.51. If you want to go down a little, you would substitute that at well, 0.55. All right. Now the capacitor, same thing. The capacitor, I'm going to guess that we can't get a 7.6. And we can't. We can only get an 8. So that's not a problem. Once again, type that in here. And see, that's going to bring that down. So if we had put 0.55 and an 8, see, they, it dropped kind of everything down. So you might want to... You know, raise one and drop one. That's going to be completely up to you. But you're going to want to do that with every single one of these. Like for example, I know you're not going to get a 5.2 resistor. You're probably going to only get a 5 ohm resistor. 
uh, and just keep an eye on what it does. So if you're really concerned on it, you can get like a five and a half or something. Just, you know, you can decide between your different resistors and what you can actually buy. Put them into this chart. Make sure that you're getting uh, what you want out of this when you're done. Okay, so if you can only get a 23 ohm capacitor, you know, just keep doing that. Um, and same with the tweeter. So let's go with the woofer and start implementing the values and show you how to do it. So L2 is a 0.51 now. So let's go here. I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'm going to put my text here. And that was L2. So L2 is right here. So let's just grab a text tool real quick and put right here 0.52. All right. So this goes right here on this inductor. Um, and in fact, while I'm at it, let's just change that color because there's no reason for it to be black. Let's make it something easier for us to see. All right. All right. There we go. Uh, that's pretty easy for us to see right now. Now let's go to the capacitor. The capacitor is an 8. And so we'll put the capacitor right here. Sorry, a new text at 8. And let's see, what else do we have? We have a C5 at 23 and an R7 at 5. So we'll go uh, right back here. So here's R7 and here's C5. So C5 is 23 and R7 is 5. So what we're going to want to do is just take our brush tool to show you exactly how we're going to do this. This is actually very simple, guys. This is not a very easy, a very hard thing to do, I promise. Um, what you're going to want to do, and I'll show you via red and black for positive and negative. Um, so you're going to take, for example, your red line and you're going to start it here. So this is your positive on your woofer. And you're going to drag it through here. And I'll move that 0.52 later so you can see it. And it's going to go straight to the tweeter. Now, this red line as well is going to connect down to here. So see that one side is going to connect to this 8 on the capacitor. See that? So this part of it is going to connect here. This part of the 23 is going to connect here. And then these two will actually be connected together. Let me move some of these out of your way so you can actually see what we're talking about. 0.52 will move up, and 8 will move over. All right. So this red line will continue. This is, once again, just, this is just the positive wire. It's just going to connect here, okay? So this resistor, resistor is going to connect between the positive and negative wire. So this negative wire, for example, is going to go here. Now, I always tell people if you're new to doing these crossovers, just keep these separate. Okay, so the negative wire is going to go straight to the negative on the woofer, and the only thing it's going to connect to is this end of the resistor, that 5 ohm resistor, and this end of this 8 ohm capacitor. I'm sorry, it's not 8 ohm, 8 UF capacitor. And that's it, guys. So that is all your woofer is. So just to be clear, this right here, these two are connected together. So there's going to be one end of this capacitor connected to one end of this resistor. And then the resistor is going to be connected to the, the other end of the resistor is going to be connected to the negative, And the other end of the capacitor is going to be connected to the positive. And one end of this 8 UF capacitor is going to be connected to the positive lead while the other side is going to be connected to the negative lead. Now people have always asked the question of can these connect to each other? Like for example, can I connect 
this end of the resistor to this end of the capacitor. And yes, of course you can do that. And the same with this end of the the capacitor to this end of uh, the capacitor. You could you could do that if you wanted to. Um, if you want to make it real nice and easy for your first time, yeah, go ahead and just put a wire between them, and that's fine as well. So woofer is actually very simple. In fact, there's there's just very few connections. So this has oh, and I'm sorry, the 0.52 one side is going to connect to the positive line and then the other side is going to connect to the other side of the positive line so a better illustration of that would be one line connected here and one line connected here okay so that's pretty easy now the tweeter is a little bit more complicated same basic thing what we're going to do is we're going to transfer it over so we're going to take our values transfer them over C9 L9 all of these. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to waste your time by transferring all these over here. Um, before I transfer these, we did an LCR on here. If you notice, I've actually cleared it out. The majority of the time, you don't actually need an LCR. There are times in which you need it, uh, and I'm not going to go into that right now, but the um, easiest thing for you to do is just check to see if you need an LCR. Uh, if you don't see anything really moving here, um, then you really don't need it. And it, it barely did anything. And so the, the cost associated with actually putting up one of those is, is typically outweighed by by the uh, by what you actually gain out of it. So um, me, I would just go ahead and do the Zobel and the uh, LPAT if it was me. That's completely up to you. If you want to go ahead and put an LCR on, go right ahead. All right. And so you're going to transfer these down to the tweeter and the exact same thing. Now, what I'm going to tell you to do is to just leave these um, separate. Now, if you had inverted the polarity, because we had talked about, you know, sometimes the polarity needs to be inverted, then the positive wire would connect to the negative side of the tweeter and vice versa. So you would still create this just like just like normal so let me just go ahead and do this so this would go all the way down and, and connect just like normal and same with this sign it would connect just like normal until here so at the end of the wire um, which typically on your crossover board once you get to the end you leave some type of terminal ends to be able to connect to the tweeter or the woofer or to whatever speaker you're connecting to and what you would do then is you would then now connect this to the negative side so this would actually flip over here um, so this would actually come over here and connect here which would typically be the positive end and vice versa so that's only if you inverted the tweeter so remember we talked about when you might need to do that and that would go there um, now how do we hook these up to the amplifier? That's a very simple question. Let me show you how to do that. We just create a new document, post it in here, and all right. So there we go. So now we have our woofer and our tweeter. Now all you're going to do is you're going to take your wire, because we have this hooked up in parallel, it's even easier. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our positive wire here. We're going to run it down here. Our positive wire here. We're going to run it here. And same with our negative is going to run here and here. And you may say, what is here? Here is going to be your speaker terminal. Wherever your speaker terminal is on the back of the speaker box or whatever you hook the amplifier into. Now, if you're running this directly to an amplifier, then it would be to the amplifier itself. Okay. So all you're doing is hooking the positives together and the negatives together to, and this would either be to the amp or, so to the amp or your binding post, whatever binding post you use. That's it. So this is a parallel connection because that's what we used in there. Um, and that's it, guys. That is how easy it is to actually create the crossover once you get all the figures figured out. Uh, having said that, one thing that I always do after I figure out these and I buy all the components and everything else, I have uh, some testing equipment. I use a UMIC one and RU, which is free. And you can actually test your speakers to make sure that you're getting a frequency response that is similar 
to what you're getting here. I did tell you that uh, this is theory. You know, this is not perfect science necessarily, but it's this is a very good program that will get you very close. So um, in the next video that we do, we'll talk about some of those theories that might actually change the curve a little. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, and we will, uh, of course, have more videos out to you. As always, please like and subscribe. Counting double-digit thousand.